Hey there, and welcome back to RimWorld. My name is Pete, and today we complete another episode of our RimWorld adventure in the tropical rainforest with the Believers of Boyo. Now, before we get started today, quick announcement, I have decided that until the release of the Anomaly DLC, we will have RimWorld only on this channel. So for a change, we will have two episodes this week, just because I really want to wrap this series up in time for the Anomaly release, and I don't want these last few episodes to feel rushed in any way. Now, last time we left off, we added the somewhat unspectacular proselytizer meme, and we also finally dipped our toes into the art of gene modifications as we created our very first xenogerm. Today we'll have to figure out who receives it, but before we do that, we'll have to do some naming, as our latest elephant acquisition will now be named Archon Ariel, a lovely suggestion from the comments of the last episode and one that fits quite well with our ongoing XCOM series, so you know, I just had to take it. As you can see, Archon Ariel now also already fully trained in the art of hauling, so the whole world, or at least this map, is now open to her. With Sanguophage Vulek then working on a second meditation throne, we received the first quest of today's episode. Once again, we are being asked to house nine guests. This time, however, they are desperate refugees, not an imperial entourage, so they are willing to do some work for us, and who knows, some of them might even decide to join us. At the same time, we also just had another shaman merchant trade caravan arrive, and we will of course take a look at their inventory in just a moment. However, considering that this quest here is a charity quest, and considering that we have plenty of space available, I would say accepting it right here now is a no-brainer. We are in good shape at the moment, so there really is no point in delaying. The refugees then arrive, and just because these guys will be doing some work for us, let's meet our guests. We have their leader Squiggle, a pigskin misandrist good at animals, medical and social, especially in the animal department, I think she will prove herself useful. Then we have Blitz, a kind Neanderthal who's not really all that skilled. Wheeler meanwhile, a fast walking careful shooter with an aptitude for animals, art and medical. And then we have Dennis, who is probably the best out of all of these, a nudist night owl with exceptional animal handling skills. Jealous Jacqueline, meanwhile, will probably do most of her work helping out with the mushroom harvest. While Lynx here, another night owl, is once again pretty versatile, I think she should make for a good hunter. Neanderthal Perez, meanwhile, is a fast walker, quick sleeper, but also lazy, while Hayes is a misandrist, once again skilled in plants and art. Finally then, we have the nimble night owl psychopath Freckles, with crafting, art and intellectual, definitely a workshop lady. Ideology-wise, then nothing that will give us too much trouble. These individualists here are actually appreciating diversity of thought, so they won't have any issues with the believers of Boyo exercising their beliefs. And so, while our guests explore what is going to be their home for the next few days, the trade caravan has also made its way over to our gates, although the deal we eventually agree on is a rather unspectacular one. We're just going to sell them as many survival meals as they can afford. Apart from their hard-earned silver, they don't have anything that we need at the moment. As you can see then, mood also a bit of an issue for our recent arrivals. That will change over the next one or two days, I think. Our base is definitely nice enough to raise their spirits, and I have also already scheduled Wyatt to make them some new clothing, as most of their current apparel is in pretty poor condition. In the meantime, we have another opportunity to do some trading, this time a bulk goods trader in orbit. And once again, we are going to relieve them of all of their silver, as well as of some fox meat and cloth, simply because selling some of our clothing items fetches us so much money that we don't really know what else to do with it. So Wyatt's definitely making this colony a whole lot of money lately with his crafting, while the rest of the afternoon remains fairly uneventful. In the early evening then, we are in fact giving out the first new clothing items. I think that too is part of our charitable mission. Unfortunately though, it is not quite enough to prevent the first mental break. Fortunately though, it is just a food binge. And well, I think it's safe to say that by this point we have some experience in dealing with those. A few hours later then, the second mental break, but hiding in one's room does not really cost us anything. So instead, let's focus on the combat supplier caravan that has just arrived. This one, interestingly enough, including Maniac's stepfather, which I have to say is quite curious, considering that Maniac himself is already 80 years old. His stepfather, meanwhile, a spring young 59, and that is without spending extended time in cryptosleep. Either way, let's not worry too much about how all that came to be. Instead, we can watch Maniac do what he does best, until we are interrupted by great news from our refugees. The first of them here is already willing to join us. 
Now we'll have to see about that, there might be more of them with that same goal in mind, and for the next few days I would like to treat them all equally as guests, afterwards then I think we'll see about who stays and who leaves. With the dawn of a new day in the jungle, Kevin then also does some trading with that caravan belonging to Maniac's stepfather, and once again we are exchanging a healthy amount of goods, some survival meals, but also plenty of old weapons salvaged from the last raids, although this time we are also buying something, most notably another doomsday rocket launcher. As an emergency option, those are always great to have. And then we are also grabbing this Masterwork plus Teal Spear here, a weapon with fantastic melee damage and even better armor penetration, perfect to go along with Wyatt's Plasma Sword and Kyle's Longsword, and thus now replacing the Thrumblehorn in the hands of Kraleth. The day then continues with another building project, please disregard our colonists walling themselves in here. As we are now moving the bedrooms of our two Sangophages, Light and Volek, what better way to house them than right next to our death rest chamber, opening up their old spaces for a few more regular bedrooms. With most of the work taken care of, we will then also have Light give a leader speech. We haven't had one of these in a while, and I think this marks a good point to have one, especially since our guests will participate. So Leader Light now hopefully inspiring his subjects as well as his guests, and as a result possibly earning us another ideology development point. And indeed it is an encouraging speech, raising the mood of everyone involved, and again that actually also includes our guests, who thanks to their individualist meme are very open to seeing the positives of other people's beliefs. Light meanwhile, with a successful speech given, now begins his death rest, while we watch a nightly hunting party venture out to hunt what else but rhinos, so our guests definitely getting the full jungle experience. And while they sneak up on their next target, we are informed of a creativity inspiration striking Dimitri, and we definitely do not want him to waste that on a marble dresser. Still, considering his skill set, it will have to be used on a construction project, I think. Most likely a bed for one of our new rooms. On the next morning, then, we are visited by more people willing to trade, although this one just a small group of travelers, so probably not in possession of any worthwhile items. Dimitri's inspiration, meanwhile, is used to create a legendary bed, this one quite obviously made for Wyatt, or someone very attached to him, as it depicts Wyatt wiping sweat off his forehead while making a duster. Needless to say, it's moving into Wyatt's bedroom immediately. In the meantime, our visitors have also made it over to us, and as expected, we don't have much to work with here, so we are dumping some of our refugees' old clothing items on them. Perhaps they know of a good way to recycle them, in our case at least, they only take up storage space. A short moment later then, we are informed that the second of the refugees wants to join us, and this is why I did not immediately accept the first offer we received. Let's see how many more we get until their stay with us is over. If we keep them happy enough, we might just see a few more. In the late afternoon then, we receive yet another charity quest. This one, however, a bit easier to fulfill. A group of beggars is asking for 39 medicine, and while that is not nothing, I think we can afford to part ways with it. After all, we do have enough materials to quickly replenish our stock. Before we can get to that, however, we successfully unlock jump packs, and it might be worth making a few of those, at least for our hunters. In the meantime, I think the next logical step for a charity-focused ideology would be hospital beds. However, to get those, we need sterile materials first, but that should be quickly completed. In the evening, then, we can watch as Kevin delivers the last bits of medicine to an extremely frail beggar recipient. I'll be honest, I have rarely seen a pawn so debilitated. Definitely makes it easier to part ways with that medicine, not to mention that we also receive two development points as a reward. On the following morning, then, not entirely unexpected, I have to say, another refugee wants to join us, and so far they are all fairly suitable candidates. None of the three have been what I would classify as entirely useless, but again, let's give it some more time. Who knows how many more end up making the same request. Nazim, meanwhile, gets himself into a bit of trouble with a panther. The sniper rifle, definitely not the best weapon from this range, and as you can see, despite the animal already injured, Nazim is just not quick enough to outrun it. 
On the bright side, at this point, refugee number 4 demands that we let them into our ranks, and once again it is one of the more useful ones, although I'm not quite sure if accepting all four of them is something our colonists would do. Either way, for now we just keep waiting. In the meantime, Wyatt is skipping himself to Nazim's rescue. Unfortunately though, not before Nazim takes a swipe or two from the panther. He will make it back to the hospital in one piece though, while Wyatt simply delivers a swipe of his own. And that's enough to kill the animal, and as you can see, despite a hefty injury, Nazim not in any life-threatening condition. At least if he makes it back to the hospital in 16 hours, which I think he should just barely manage. The remainder of the afternoon meanwhile rather uneventful, and so we skip ahead until it's time to once again load up the drop pods. We are once again sending out Brandon on a journey towards the Empire, towards the settlement that we already visited last episode. However, by now they have restocked their wares, which is why I'm very interested to see what they might have to sell. Now selling off all of our goods earns us a decent amount of money, almost 2000 silver. Money that we are not going to spend on the gene pack here however. Robust might be useful, but very unhappy is definitely not. So instead we are grabbing another death rest capacity serum and yes, I think we just have to do it, the side trainer for Neuroquake. With that, our leader Light can now follow in the footsteps of our last series leader Spex, who used this sidecast to great effect to defend her village from enemies. Something that I do not envision will be necessary all that often with Light, but still, I think it's great to have it as an emergency option just in case. For the time being though, Light is still death resting, so we spend the night hunting elephants and being joined by yet another trade caravan. A caravan that is thankfully well on its way towards our base as we draw the anger of the entire herd. Luckily though, thanks to Maniac's stunt sidecast, our hunters manage to stay ahead of the animals, at least until backup from the mountain arrives, and with their help it doesn't take long to secure our food supply for the next few days. As the sun then rises again, we have some cows wander in and promptly self-tame. They will however not last long, so we are not wasting any patron names on them. Outside of our gates, Kevin then meets with the trade caravan. Their inventory however is rather disappointing and so we only end up selling some herbal medicine. At the moment we just have so much of it that I think we can afford to part ways with a few stacks. As Maniac then hunts another man-hunting animal, Vulek ingests his next death rest capacity serum. And so we will, in just a moment, be able to build the fourth and final glucosoid pump for him. Another small hunting party then also goes after a group of rhinos that have wandered in. Once again though, superior firepower ensures that we are not in any danger. As the carcasses are then hauled back to the base, sterile materials are successfully researched and so we can continue right away with hospital beds. For the time being, I don't think we will actually place sterile tiles in our hospital. As you know, we are not frequently performing any major surgeries, and for just patching up injured pawns, I think what we currently have more than suffices. What is also more than sufficient is our current food supply, at least on the meat side of things, which is why we are currently digging out yet another small expansion to our mushroom farm, although that project is interrupted as Refugee Wheeler gets a bit too close to a rhinoceros, and this time I'm afraid Wyatt will not be able to make it in time. So yes, as you can see, he is already on his way, but for poor Wheeler that help comes just a bit too late. Thankfully though, he did not die on us. The Rhino meanwhile, not much of a problem for Wyatt, especially not with a caravan backing him up. Poor Wheeler meanwhile, definitely in a slightly more serious situation than Nazim was earlier. Still, seven hours is plenty of time to get him back to the hospital and administer some first aid. A short while later then, a light emerges from his death rest, and as the only level 6 psychaster in our colony, his first task after awakening is an easy one, let's have him learn Neuroquake. We'll see if he ever needs to use it before the series is over, like I said though, I just had to grab it. At this point then, we can also schedule the construction of a fourth glucosoid pump, up to four of them can be connected to a Sanguophage's death rest casket, and with Light focusing on the side casting side of things, I think it's only fair that we give Vulek all the other Sanguophage bonuses he can get. A few hours later then, Wheeler is thankfully no longer considered downed. Unfortunately though, the same cannot be said for refugee freckles over here. Liver cirrhosis, a pag lag, and the withdrawal symptoms of an alcohol addiction are making her suffer quite severely. So much so in fact that she is no longer capable of getting up herself. 
Now I guess we'll have to figure out if and what we can do about that. In the meantime, our fungus farm expansion project is coming along nicely, and so we can already see our mushroom farmers move in to plant more crops. Just as we then deal with a self-tamed tortoise, we receive the good news that Admiral Azazi has given birth, and so we can give out another name from the list of patron supporters in the naming rights tier and above, and this time we go with Lem, so congratulations and welcome to the colony. And yours is not the only name that joins us here today. Lady Lizette follows suit with a birth of her own shortly after, her offspring now receiving the name Olex, after patron supporter Olex S. The rest of the afternoon as well as the night then pass by uneventfully, until in the early morning hours Maniac returns from deep drilling, and by popular demand he will now be the first recipient of the bloodless sanguophage xenogerm, our very first gene modding project that we finished in the last episode. Implanting this xenogerm will then also put him into a two-day coma, but considering that he will be deathless, psychically sensitive and capable of super-fast wound healing afterwards, I think that is a price we can afford to pay. Yes, he will also be deathly afraid of fire and will require a bit more food, but taking a look at the state of our fridge at the moment, I don't think that will be a problem. And at the hands of Dr. Kevin, the Xenogerm implantation works smoothly, and with that we have now ensured that the 80-year-old maniac will continue to live for quite a while longer. Just in that moment then, the research of hospital beds also concludes, and up next we continue down the medical avenue with prosthetics. This was actually suggested by some of you quite a few episodes ago, and I think it does make some sense for a charity ideology. Who knows, maybe we can even help some people recover the occasional lost limb. A group of visitors then passing by, but nothing out of the ordinary, and these guys don't even have anything to sell. And so we can watch as another rather uneventful day slowly but steadily winds down, and then rewards us with another quest at midnight. The Empire informs us that a tech print is lying around somewhere out there in the jungle, and it is guarded by 28 man-hunting foxes as well as a potential unknown threat. Still, I don't think it will be that difficult to retrieve the tech print. After all, we have a super psycaster by the name of Light in our ranks. Before we send him out, however, the prosthetics research already concludes, and with that we are now slowly getting to the point where there's really not that much more to research that makes sense in the scope of this ideology. There is one more thing, however, that I think we want to grab, and it is the vitals monitor. It will take us quite some time, but it is still an industrial tech project, so let's get started with that and then construct another drop pod, a drop pod that we can now have a light enter. No further travel supplies are needed, I think this should be done quickly. Light sci focus bar is more or less maxed out at the moment, so we will have plenty of toys to play with. As we then jump onto the new map, the location of the tech print is easily spotted, a small building on the side of the mountain here surrounded by foxes. And those foxes are manhunters, so let's make sure they don't hunt light. A quick invisibility sidecast already achieves that, and afterwards we can quickly skip light right to the loot. The tech print then also unfortunately the only thing of value in this small mountainside shack here. Still invisible, light can grab it and then fast skip himself back home. And there we go, quest completed, nice and easy, and that's another tech print to add to our collection. Once again, the reason why we are not using any of these yet is because we want Ellie to be able to use them, as she will receive 2000 XP towards the intellectual skill for each tech print applied. However, she can only do that as soon as she turns 13 years old, which will unfortunately take a few more days. In the meantime, you can see it, Wyatt is already working on his first prosthetic leg, and we also had another small group of traders appear, although once again they have nothing of interest to us. Unfortunately then, with the leg finished, a few hours later we learn that our guests will not appreciate it, so against our better judgement, Freckles will have to keep her peg leg. If we were to go through with the operation, we would actually fail the quest, so this is unfortunately not one of those cases where we can force charity upon others with little downside. So instead, let's celebrate, once again, colonists and guests alike, even if Maniac and Freckles cannot be part of it, this should hopefully still result in a good mood boost for everyone else, a final parting gift so to speak, because in just a few hours at least some of our refugees will leave again.
And indeed, it is an unforgettable pain party, earning us two development points. Everyone who participates also receives a mighty plus eight mood bonus. And in just a moment, we will also have some insect jelly pop up in our guest quarters, although the amount is once again somewhat disappointing. During the night then, as it is currently raining, our colonists attempting to hunt a few more boomalopes. Nazim here, with the sniper rifle from close range, finding an interesting way of training up his shooting skill. And eventually, he also finds his mark. On the next morning then, it is time. Our guests will depart in just three hours. And so I guess we now have to decide what to do with the four of them who are willing to join us. Just as a quick refresher, I'll pull up their bios on screen right here. Like I said, all four of them could make for interesting additions, but I am also extremely hesitant about adding four additional colonists at this stage in the series, especially considering that our base does already feel quite crowded. So let me know in the comments down below what you think we should do with them. Should we bow down to our charitable beliefs and take them all in? Should we send them all back home or should we find some other way to determine who gets a spot? I am very much looking forward to seeing what ideas you guys can come up with. So let's wrap things up here. No fan art today, but with plenty more RimWorld still left to come this week, that might change in a few days. Either way, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, then I would be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then you can of course go ahead and subscribe to stay up to date, grab some merch over on shop.peatcomplete.com, or check out and maybe even pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.